Hello, I'm sure you have heard the word matter before. Matter is simply anything around us that occupies space and has mass. Matter is made up of atoms. We are going to be learning about the particulate nature of matter, part 1. My name is Kingsley Linus. Join me as we learn about matter today. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how molecules of a substance move relative to other substances. Secondly, you should be able to describe the atomic structure of matter. And lastly, you should be able to state the constituents of the atom. Just like I mentioned earlier, matter is simply anything we can find around us that takes up space and has mass. A Greek philosopher named Democritus did a very intensive study about matter and he came up with a theory that we refer to as the atomic theory. Now, this theory says that matter is made up of small indivisible particles that are called atoms. These atoms are always in constant motion. We are going to learn some more about what these atoms are made up of. The atomic theory of matter has it that atoms are in constant, rapid, random motion. Now, this can be explained with three evidences. And these evidences are the Brownian motion, diffusion, and the law of definite proportion. We are going to see what these evidences are as we go further in this lesson. The Brownian motion talks about the irregular movement of the particles of matter. And this study was done by a scientist, Robert Brown, in the year 1827. He found out that the particles of matter move in irregular patterns. You can see this image here showing us what the Brownian motion looks like. You discover that various particles are moving in various irregular patterns, as we can see. Another evidence of the particulate nature of matter is the law of definite proportion. And the law of definite proportion states that a compound contains its constituent element in the same proportion, irrespective of its source or method of preparation. For example, let's consider water. Water in its pure state is written as H2O. Now, this means that wherever you find pure water, it has two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen, meaning that you can get pure water from the rain or pure water from any other source, a borehole, and then you will always find the combination in the ratio 2 is to 1, that is hydrogen 2 molecules and oxygen 1 molecule. Carbon dioxide can also be another example, and we have so many examples of compounds that combine in definite proportions. Now let's look at the last evidence of the particulate nature of matter, diffusion. Diffusion is simply a net movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to another region of lower concentration. Now this can be illustrated using the bromine liquid. When a bromine liquid is dropped in a gas jar, after some time you discover that the particles of that liquid that have turned gaseous will be found all over that gas jar. Recall I mentioned earlier that matter is made up of atoms. Now, an atom is simply the smallest indivisible part of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. An atom is made up of two parts, basically the nucleus and the electrons. The nucleus of an atom is found at the center of the atom and while we have electrons surrounding the nucleus. The nucleus is the heavy part of the atom and it consists of two parts, the neutron and the proton. The neutrons have no charge, while protons are positively charged. On the other hand, electrons are light in weight and are negatively charged. 
This makes it very easy for electrons to transfer from one atom to another. So it is important for you to note that ordinarily atoms are neutral and for a neutral atom the number of protons equals the number of electrons. Now one or more atoms of an element make up what we refer to as a molecule. You might ask what is a molecule? A molecule is simply the smallest particle of an element that can exist independently without losing its properties. Going on, we must understand that molecules of a substance are usually identical. That means they look alike and they also have similar structure and same mass. Now, let's talk about the size of molecules. Usually, the size of a molecule is between 10 raised to the power minus 9 and 10 raised to the power minus 10 meters. The small size of molecules is necessary because molecules are meant to move or relate with others. So this is the reason why it has a relatively small size. Next, one gram of an element contains several millions of molecules and a gram of hydrogen contains 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 molecules. Now, to go further in this lesson, let's talk about the movement of molecules. Recall that I mentioned earlier that the particulate nature of matter can be shown with three evidences. One of those evidences is the Brownian motion. Now, if you observe dust particles in a beam of light, you discover that these dust particles have random movement or random motion. This is what the Brownian motion is about. In the same way, molecules of matter move randomly. So from our figure here, you can see particles of a given element, how they spread as a result of the random, constant, irregular motion of these particles because they have a wider space to occupy. Now, when we talk about the motion of molecules, Take for example hydrogen sulfide gas. Hydrogen sulfide gas, when released in a laboratory, will be felt at every part or the smell will be perceived in every part of that laboratory. This is possible because of diffusion. So diffusion is the movement of molecules of a substance from regions where they are in high concentration to other regions where they are in lower concentration. The movement of molecules is affected by temperature. Having discussed the motion of molecules, this is where we come to the end of this lesson. But before we go, let's look at all we've learned in a summary. First, we learned that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Going forward, we learned that matter is made up of tiny particles which are in constant rapid motion. We also learned that an atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element which can take part in a chemical reaction. Going further, we learned that an atom is made up of neutrons, electrons and protons. And lastly, we learned that a molecule is the smallest particle of an element which is capable of independent existence without losing its properties. It's test time. Question 1. The movement of molecules of matter from regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration is called A. Brownian motion B. Atomic theory C. Diffusion or D. Osmosis The correct answer is C. Diffusion Question 2 says which of the following is not an evidence of the particulate nature of matter? A. Brownian motion B. Law of definite proportion C. Diffusion D. Intermolecular forces The correct answer is option D. Intermolecular forces So this is where we come to the end of this lesson. Thank you for your time. 
till we see you again in the part two of this lesson. Bye-bye.